Welcome to section 5. In this video we're going to look at data normalization and data models. So this is actually going to be probably the most important section of this entire class because it really will give you an overview of the most powerful things Splunk can do in regards to making sense of a whole lot of different types of data. So if there's any section you want to spend time on and make sure you understand, this is going to be the section you want to do. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of different things. First, we're going to onboard a new type of data. In this case, it's going to be the IP tables firewall logs from your Linux instance. We're going to also show you how to make a configuration change in a conf file, as opposed to using the web interface and applying those changes. Then we'll show you a little bit about how field extractions work and the default Splunk behavior that happens when you onboard a file. Then we'll look at data normalization and finally wrap up with the common information model or SIM. So without further ado, let's look at onboarding the IP tables logs. So to get started, we're going to look at onboarding more data. We already have our auth logs in the Linux instance, but we want to add some more. So what we're first going to do is go ahead and make IP tables log all of the traffic on our instance. And we're going to do that using the commands that are listed here on the slides. Basically, that's just going to make our firewall on our system not stop anything, but log in a very verbose way. So let's go ahead and do that. So you'll see right here that I'm logged in as the Splunk user on our Linux instance that we were previously using. I first need to go ahead and get to a root shell in order to run the commands to enable IP tables logging. Since I got to this user by doing a sudo dash i and then switching to the Splunk user, I'll be able to simply exit out and have a root shell. However, you may be in a case where you're just logged in as your normal user. In that case, you may see the shell looking like this, in my case, with Ubuntu. In order to get to root in this instance, you'll want to run sudo dash i. And you'll see there, I'm a root user. As long as the shell says root at the beginning of it, like you see there, you have the right permissions in order to run these commands. So you'll see right now I've ran the commands to enable IP tables logging. Now let's verify that this is logging correctly by tailing the log file that is receiving this data, var log syslog. And you'll see right here a snapshot of all of the firewall logs that we're receiving. I can also show you that this log is actively being written to by running the tail-f command. And this will show you all of the firewall logs as they're happening in real time. When Splunk is monitoring a file, that's exactly what it's doing. It's reading a file as it's being written, and then logging that into Splunk. One last thing we're going to need to do is give the Splunk user permission to read the var log syslog file. This is just like we did in the previous section when we had to do that to the var log auth file. So to do that, we're going to need to run the setfacl command. There you go. Now we're going to switch. The Splunk user can read the var log syslog file. So we'll just su minus to the Splunk user. And then we'll run the tail command to confirm that we can read the var log syslog file. And there you go, we can. So the next thing we're going to do is modify the inputs.conf file that we located in the previous example and configure it to read the syslog file. And then we're going to add a stanza in order to configure Splunk to read this file. So let's first go to the location where that file exists. So if you followed along previously, your inputs.conf file should be in the opt Splunk Etsy apps search local directory, as you see here. 
as I showed you previously, if you cannot find the file here, you can use the btool command to locate the path for this. Let me just demonstrate again how to do that in case you didn't have a chance to record that earlier. So you'll see right here that I ran a grep for the auth.log file, and we can see that our inputs.com file is at this location. You can do the same thing if you can't find your file. So as you can see here, if we look at this input.com file, we have a stanza that is called a monitor stanza here, telling Splunk to read the auth.log file. We're going to duplicate the stanza and configure Splunk to read the syslog file. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open the inputs.com file in the text editor of my choice. We're going to copy this entire stanza and duplicate it. Next, we're going to change the path from auth.log to syslog. And then we're going to change the source type to syslog as well. Now we'll double check to make sure we didn't make any typographical errors while inserting this. You can see that our file path looks good, and you can see that our source type looks good. One thing just to note, you'll see that the monitor stanza on a Linux file path has three leading forward slashes. That's right here. That is expected and how it should be configured on a Linux system. Two slashes are part of the monitor stanza syntax, and the third slash represents the Linux file path. Now that everything looks good, we will save this file and restart Splunk. Now that Splunk is restarted, we will go to the Splunk web interface and run a search for our data. So I'm going to log into our Splunk interface and then run a search. If we click on our data summary, we should see syslog listed as a source type. Here we go, we see syslog. We'll click on that. Alternatively, you can also click on or just type source type equal equals syslog, and you will see that here in the logs. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these logs. If we expand it, you'll see that there's a number of different fields that are extracted. What you'll notice with these is that several of these field extractions, such as DST and DPT, are not necessarily all that consistent with what you might see with other products. Fortunately, there's a solution for that. 